All right. Great to be back. Excited to be in game week. Good to see everybody again. Um, I, I want to start um, just touching on two things from, from last week. First, the, uh, the banter with Steve Fink, who, of course, is not here again today. But So Steve and I actually have become really good friends during my, my three years here now. And uh, so if I refer to him as Joseph Stalin or Dr. Evil or – or Lex Luthor or something. I'm, that's, I'm just joking around. He's, he's really a good dude. Our wives are friends. We've been out to dinner before, so it's all good. He's a lot older than me, obviously, but, but uh, we're still really good friends. So uh, that was the first thing. Then the second thing is um, apparently my, my minivan comments must have caused a little bit of a stir because within minutes I was getting text messages from all three of my children which means something probably showed up on their Instagram or whatever they're looking at. Um, and, and so I, I, I stand by my comments. I deplore many fans, but I didn't mean to, uh, to unravel anybody with that. But I did think it was pretty funny that I heard from all three of my kids within about an hour, which usually doesn't happen unless there's an emergency and they need me for something. So um, I, I do like my cars. I'm a classic car guy. Um, like my manual transmission cars, love to love to drive one of those when I can. Um, so all good there. Um, all right, back to the task at hand. So um, it's actually nice to talk about things other than the game because the first week of the season for a special teams coordinator is always a little bit unnerving. Um, and I think it really started a week ago for me. I think I mentioned to you that I was uh, like General Patton coming off the field that day. So, um, you know, you, you have certain limitations in what you can do in practice. As, as generous as Coach Beamer is with meeting time and, and practice time for us, and as much as he understands the importance of what we do and the contributions that we hope to make, um, there are limitations on what you can do. And... You will do live work on offense and defense, but you know the vast majority of what we're doing on special teams doesn't go truly full speed uh, until Saturday evening. And uh, we've got a lot of moving parts, a lot of new guys in different spots. And so um, you know this week is always a very interesting one. And, and you turn on the TV last Saturday night, there were some week zero games and uh, I saw two kickoff returns for touchdowns. Uh, one was uh, was Vanderbilt. Uh, my old special teams coordinator Justin Lustig got it done in, in the first game. Uh, so we'll we'll be facing those guys way down the road. But uh, uh, so you, you know those are the types of things that happen in the first game. And we've been fortunate to be on the good side of that the last two years in opening games, but you never take anything for granted. And as I mentioned to you last week, every year is new, presents its own unique set of challenges. Um, so we're trying to take nothing for granted and, and uh, make sure that things are, are tightened up um, as much as they possibly can be. Um, so I've followed uh, UNC's special teams pretty closely uh, since Coach Brown got back there. And, uh, and what you've seen is a steady improvement over, I guess this is year five now uh, for him. Uh, you know, early on, there were some changes in the staff. They went through a couple different special teams coordinators. Um, and then Larry Porter came along. I believe he spent one year on the staff as an assistant and then took over the special teams. And he's done a really good job. He's a veteran coach. He's been around at a lot of big time places, had a lot of success. And uh, you see an identity forming. You see uh, some co cohesiveness, um, particularly on their return units. Uh, they, they really have showed improvement there. They've got really good systems in place that the players understand what they're trying to get done. Um, and then I really like the, the speed and the athleticism on their cover units. So. In terms of the opponent this week, um, there, there's definitely uh, challenges there, both in terms of, uh, of personnel and scheme. Um, and, and I think this is a team that saw some success on special teams last year and, and is really looking to build on that. Um, they've got some guys back. Um, 
British Brooks, the, the running back, um, you know, from everything I gather, this guy is a, um, a really big um, guy to have in the locker room and on the field and good for their culture and takes special teams seriously. So I'm sure they're going to find spots for, for him to contribute. You probably noticed that they picked up a very experienced kicker from Cincinnati in Ryan Coe. And, uh, you know, I'm very familiar with Cincinnati's program from my days at Memphis. Um, and this guy uh, has played a lot of football there, won a lot of games there. Um, fortunately, there is a lot of video available on him uh, because of how much he played. But he's got uh, some 50-plus yard field goals in his career. And, uh, and he, he bangs a lot of touchbacks with good hang time. So he's, he's a really good player. I'm sure they're very excited to have him. Uh, punter Ben Kiernan uh, is a longtime starter there, a guy who's equally good angle punting and, and rugby punting for them. Um, he's also their holder. Uh, both snappers return 61, 62, I believe, are their numbers, little and, and triplet. So there's uh, experience and, and cohesion there in terms of the, the snapper punter or the snapper holder uh, combinations there. Um, both kick returners return, uh, 23 Petaway and 28 Hampton. And the thing that stands out to me about both of those guys is that they're hard to bring down. So when they get the ball and they get vertical, uh, they, they have the ability to break tackles. Uh, so they're not just fast guys with the ball in their hand, but they're also uh, rugged runners. And, and uh, again, they understand what they're trying to accomplish from a scheme standpoint. So their punt returner is really the new piece. Um, uh, Elijah Huzzy, I believe, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he's another 28, so they've got some double numbers just like we do. But if you see 28 out there punt returning, um, he's an East Tennessee transfer, a uh, guy who's got good quickness, a guy who had some explosive returns for them last year. So um, really good personnel. A um, lot, of, lot of respect for what they're doing and how they're trying to do it. Um, I thought they uh, played well against us two years ago in the bowl game, but I think they've, they've definitely taken some steps forward. Uh, from our standpoint, I think job number one in, in the first game is to not beat yourself, um, to, to, to play smart football and, and uh, you know, not try to um, do anything outlandish that could potentially – cause a penalty or, um, um, you know, take care of the football, just the, the, the basic things, football one-on-one type things that we preach every day. Um, job number two is to, to try to contain some of these athletes uh, that we'll be, we'll be up against and, and minimize their impact. And then lastly, try to find some ways that we can contribute to a win. And I think that starts with our specialists. You know, this time last year, for the most part, those guys were flying under the radar and now we have three really known commodities, guys that have um, seen uh, post, received postseason honors and things of that nature. Well, you know, there's a responsibility that comes along with that. And we expect those guys to go out and perform at a very high level and, and to continue to be leaders on this team by how they perform and how they lead by example. So looking forward to seeing those guys under the lights Saturday night. Pete, you mentioned about the first week and, and kind of nerve-wracking. So, one, does that make you maybe a little more hesitant when you're thinking about doing a trick play? And, two, have you watched any film of the 2017 USC opener in Charlotte? I haven't gone all the way back to 2017. I'd have to think about where I was in 2017. I think I was at Maryland. Uh, so, uh, no, I wouldn't say that it, it's sort of apples and oranges. Um and, and again, you know, it's it's not about trick plays for me. It's it's about playing good, cohesive football. When when you turn on the video on Sunday, did we play with great effort? Did we cover the last kickoff with the same effort that we did the first one? Did we did we try to go after the last PAT or field goal with the same effort that we went after the first one? Um, and then if you turned on the film and and you were just some coach from some other school watching us, you know, do we look like we know what we're doing in terms of fundamentals um, and, and playing cohesively? Because all it takes is one guy 
to uh, step out of line and freelance, and and that can cause a whole lot of of disruption for us. So you know that's that's the main thing for me is understand what we do, why we do it, and when the lights go on, don't do anything different. Just play within our system, and you'll be just fine. Yeah, I know you talked about with Jalen Brooks saying that he, you know, was being looked at for special teams a lot in the NFL to see him as a seventh rounder make a roster yesterday and also Nate as an undrafted guy. Just yeah. what was that like for you to sort of see that pay off for them? Yeah, super exciting. And uh, throw Javon Gwynn in there too. Uh, you know, he was on the field goal unit the, the last uh, couple of years and, and I'm always um, close with those O linemen just because of my own background and and uh, enjoy building the relationships with those guys and that's not to take anything away from those high draft choices we have because we're fired up for those guys too but making the team as a late round draft choice as a free agent is not easy to do and so um, and coach Beamer did a great job of, of talking to the team about that after practice today just getting them to understand like those guys all have something in common and it's true like they loved football Jalen Brooks would be up here in the evenings every night and he'd be in your office you know trying to watch a clip or two hey why are we doing this uh he'd be in coach Stepp's office all the time and uh you know Nate was a guy that played through a lot of injuries and saw his role grow tremendously as the season went on so you take an extra little bit of of pride when you see those things happen and actually in my introductory meeting to the team when we started preseason camp I specifically mentioned Jalen and Nate uh, because of how much they understood what special teams was doing to give them a chance to continue to play so that's really special Pete, and to throw one more in there, you might not have known just happened. Darius Rush was claimed by the Kansas City Chiefs, so thought you'd appreciate finding that out. I, I'm uh, not surprised. You know, I was I was a little bit surprised that uh, that he didn't make the 53 there because we had gotten some positive feedback from Indianapolis. But I'm in no way surprised that somebody quickly picked him up. Mm -hmm. And uh, just talking about special teams, I mean, we, we were talking about the beginning of the season, how you guys have the target on your back, and there's more people that want to be in your room now. With that being said, how has this preseason been in terms of letting them know, hey, especially the new guys, last season doesn't mean anything. If anything, there's going to be a bigger target on our back and we have to go out there and exceed those expectations. Yeah, no no question. And uh, I think you, you nailed it all. And the fact that we have so many new players, um, they didn't experience what we did last year. They don't know how much went into – putting a season like that together week after week and and uh, not only making big things happen through gadgets, but just making big things happen through good, cohesive football um, and, and, you know, the blocks that need to happen for a big return to occur and the guys that need to be doing their job, even if you're not the guy that eventually gets there and blocks the punt. Well, a bunch of other guys had to do their job, too, to – to create that seam, uh, to create that one-on-one -on -one opportunity that somebody could win a matchup. So a lot of these young guys are really, really still figuring this out. It's like, well, I came here to catch passes or I came here to rush the passer. No, no, no. You know, the, the way you're going to develop a reputation around here is by working really hard at everything you do, starting with your academics and in the weight room and and um, developing trust and reliability. And a lot of that comes from, you know, do you take um, being the three on kickoff coverage as seriously as you take uh, being an edge rusher or whatever, whichever guy, you know, that you're, you're referring to. So that's very, very much a work in progress. And there's, there's several guys that, you know, are in my mind right now that are not ready this week but maybe next week or maybe by the bye week. Um, and, and if you look at our depth chart over the course of a season, you know, the guys that are covering a kickoff against Clemson are very different than the guys that will be covering a kickoff this Saturday night in Charlotte. As far as the new clock rules for the NCAA, how much is that stuff on your radar? And, and Coach Beamer talked about some of the things you all have done in practice to kind of get ready for, but what can you share about sort of your – 
perspective on it and, and how you're, I guess, involved with helping Coach Beamer that way. Sure. Well, I actually did a little research on that back in the spring, um, and I talked to several people, uh, analytics uh, folks, as well as some coaches that I really respect as game managers and guys that understand game situations. And so we sort of had a ballpark on how much shorter, you know, we, we think the games are going to be. And then you had a few games last weekend. <clears throat> I think I saw the average amount of offensive plays might have been 65. Um, so that's certainly less um, than it, what it was the year before. I think the year before, um, you know, the low, I think the low team in the country averaged right about 60 and the high team in the country might have been upwards around 80 or so. Um, so we'll see after we have a little bit more of a, uh, of a sample size. There you go. A sample size of games this weekend. But I anticipate that, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit shorter. And so that means you have to be more efficient. And, um, and every, every call you have has to, has to be one that counts, right? There's, there's, no, there's no throwaways. So, um, so we'll see. You know, usually we average about 30 special teams plays in a game. So we'll see here when we get, uh, you know, a few weeks into the season if that comes down a couple. Um, I, my gut tells me it's probably going to come down a little bit more on offense and defense. And, you know, we're still going to have our roughly 25 to 30 plays per game. Pete, you've worked with Nick Barrett quite a bit over the course of the last couple of years. He's probably going to have a bigger role defensively this year. Just how have you seen him grow and kind of grow into his role heading into this season? Yeah, Nick's a great kid. Um, he's, a, he's a quiet leader. He, he works very hard, works hard in the weight room. He's a really good student. And um, he's been involved in special teams since he's been here. So he's, he's one of the big guys in our, in our punt shield um, and, and he's had some other roles on special teams as well. And so I spend a lot of time with Nick, uh, appreciate him. Um, I've, I've enjoyed seeing him grow and develop. And we've got some really good dudes in that D line room. There's a, there's a core of guys in there, some veteran guys that are, are really, really solid human beings and good students and just, uh, fun guys to be around. You know, I, I give Nick a hard time. I call him, Nicky bag of donuts because we have a bunch of Nickies on the team. And so I've got all my, you know, New York City Italian nicknames for the, all those guys. Uh, they're kind of like the mafia, but um, and but he's he's fun and uh, enjoy um, that. That's just a great guy to have in your program. I know you're constantly evaluating things through the season and week to week, but going into a game one, how I guess set are you with your uh, kick coverage, punt coverage, those teams, and how many spots you still say you still need to kind of see what it looks like in a game setting? Yeah, it's always evolving. And there'll be some spots where we hope to rotate guys. Um, you know, obviously, double numbers factor into some of that, and you got to be careful you're not getting overzealous with substitutions and end up, you know, in a bad spot in terms of, uh, of having two of a certain guy on the field. But I hope – over the first several weeks of the season here that we can uh, give some different guys a shot and, uh, and continue to evaluate. And, and we'll keep competing on Tuesdays in practice too. So we've often done some, some really physical drills on Tuesdays because that's where you, you see guys continuing to grow. And uh, I'll just take Zabari Sandy as a guy that I noticed out there on defense today and it looked like he had a different level of urgency to him today in terms of what he was doing defensively. And so noted, you know, <laughs> and, all right, now next week, maybe on Tuesday, I'm going to get that guy a couple more reps and say, all right, let's see if you can stack practices and, and do it not just on defense, but do it on special teams. And, and now if you can, all right, maybe you find yourself on the depth chart. So, and that's another part of it is that guys have to do it both on offense and defense and on special teams. Um, unless you're just flat out a three-unit starter on special teams that we're saying this guy has to go no matter what, then you better be making progress on defense or offense as well because I'm looking at that too and saying, all right, this guy's you know starting to 
get some playing time on defense. Now we need to accelerate him and give him even more reps on special teams because he's probably going to be on the bus and we don't just want him, you know, making a trip and having a steak dinner and, you know, um, hanging out. Uh, what is your favorite nickname for a newcomer this year? And is there anybody Ooh. who you're struggling with trying to uh, assign Ooh. one that you need to come up yeah, with? Yeah, well, you know, nicknames are somewhat earned too. You know, they're, they're somewhat earned. So, um, you know, I may have something that I've, I've got in the on-deck circle, but I'm waiting for a guy to come on before we start referring to him Um by, by a nickname, but, um, but some of our, um, some of our walk on guys, um, have, uh, have come on and, uh, you've got, you've got Brad well done. Um, you know, you've got, you've got Ronnie Porterhouse. So you got some guys that have, have stuck it out with us for a while and they're starting to get better and get noticed. And all of a sudden, you know, if you start referring to them by their nickname in the meetings, that's usually you're, you're becoming one of the boys, you know, you're not one of the boys until you're one of the boys. And, and some of those guys are becoming one of the boys, which is good. All right. Last line of Terminator. Linda Hamilton, right, pulls into the gas station in the Jeep Renegade. Little boy says something in Spanish, takes a picture, and what did he say? There's a storm coming in. Stay dry, everybody. We'll see you. Okay. All right.